Greetings. Time to do another review of a movie series. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to do Star Wars today, but I've always been a Star Trek fan. I get the feeling that, for the most part, you love certain movies because, well, when you're younger, you kind of have drawn to them. Now, I say that having loved all the Harry Potter movies, and I was definitely an adult, and I love most of the Marvel movies that came out definitely adult, but I feel the closest connection to the Star Wars movies because I started watching the TV show when I was eight years old. At least I think I was eight. I might have even been seven. <laughs> I don't really remember. But, you know, I was closer to that group. I've always felt as Spock is just my guy. Spock is my guy. And then Captain Picard. I just like those cerebral guys who are still tough enough to be able to, well, be tough when they need to be. But the Star Wars movies, I've enjoyed most of them. I obviously, like a lot of other people, there's some I don't like. I'm going to be ranking 10 movies. Now, there's the 11th, which is the Han Solo movie, but I wasn't in the mood to watch it. I, For whatever reason, I just had no interest in watching it. And based on the reviews that came out later on, I was right. So <laughs> there you go. But I'm going to rank my top 10, and I'm going to say this up front. I liked all seven from one to seven i liked them all eight through ten not so much but we'll get there so let's talk about the order i'm going to go from ten to one and there's going to be some folks who aren't going to like some of my choices that's just how that works but i doubt that anyone is going to gripe about my ten through eight and no one's going to gripe about number one the rest of them We'll find out. Just to get this out the way also, I'm not one of those fanboys. In other words, I didn't necessarily read any of the Star Wars books. I have not read any of the comic books. I didn't watch the cartoon series. You know, I just didn't see any of that stuff. So I don't have these preconceived notions of when someone says, well, they didn't act that way or they shouldn't have been that way. I got none of that. What I judged movies on was how I was entertained and if the movie made sense for the most part. And that's going to be the problem with the first three. So here we go. Number 10 on my list is Phantom Menace. Everyone's going to hate Phantom Menace. A menace. Not menace yet. <laughs> Everyone's going to hate this movie. Now, it did have a couple of nice things. You had Liam Neeson in it and you had Ewan McGregor. And that's it. <laughs> Jar Jar Binks was horrible. I'm sorry that the little boy in the movie who ended up leaving show business because he took so much heat for this. I'm sorry for that, but that just, oh, he wasn't good in it. Um, truthfully, there were a whole lot of racial stereotypes in this movie. And when I, you know, at the theater, when I'm watching this, I'm saying, oh my God, what was George Lucas thinking? And I'm going to say this, if a lot of you didn't notice the racial stereotypes, then y'all got a problem because <laughs> they were blatant stereotypes. I hated every aspect of this movie except for the fight with the Sith. Everything else, didn't like it at all. The only Star Wars movie where I couldn't really find anything I liked about it except for that one little scene. Number nine on my list is Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones was the second of the second series of movies. And I feel bad for Hayden Christensen. You know, he really was bad in these movies. But from what I understand, he was told to act the way that he did. And so a director will kill an actor. And I've seen Hayden Christensen in some things outside of Star Wars. And he was not bad. So maybe George Lucas just had this idea of how he should be. But he was just stiff. He was really stiff. And, you know, let's face the fact here. I can't be the only one who was uncomfortable with the idea that he was going to fall in love with Padme <laughs> when, what, what were they, about like 11 years apart or something like that? Ew, that's just creepy. I, you know, but it was better than Phantom Menace, which ain't saying much, but the best thing about uh, Attack of the Clones, the only good thing was the fight between Yoda and, you know what, I don't remember the other guy's name. I didn't write it down. Because I'm looking at my list and I didn't write that down. But seeing Yoda, who we're always used to limping around, all of a sudden jumping all over the place and having this great, great, uh, you know, light sword fight. 
classic. You know, you could have just made the entire movie that, and this movie probably would have been in the top five. <laughs> okay, okay, that's an exaggeration, but man, that was the coolest thing. And then when the fight was over, it's just like, okay, now I'm back to limping, Yoda. <laughs> But other than that, the rest of the movie was stupid. It made no real sense. You know, even when you find out what the clones are, it was just lame. I It just didn't work for me at all. And, you know, there you go. Number eight on my list, obviously, is Return of the Sith. Because it just finishes, you know, the trio of the quote-unquote one through three. But the fourth, fifth, and sixth movies that were released. And even that one was not the greatest movie in the world. But it did have some good scenes. I loved when Samuel Jackson, who I can't remember the name of the character he was playing. But when he was fighting the Emperor, I thought that was kind of cool. I loved the scene where um, Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan are fighting on the lava. That is one of the coolest things I've ever seen in any of the Star Wars movies. That was just fantastic. Some of the rest of it, I gotta tell you the truth. I think that George Lucas basically called it in when he had Anakin Skywalker decide he's gonna be with um, the Emperor. I just couldn't see how he folded like that. It was like, okay, wait, what happened? What did I miss? There was nothing that indicated that that should have happened at all. And then you hear that he killed all the kids and all this other kind of stuff. I just thought, okay, this movie's lacking. And the only reason I walked out happy was because <clears throat> the fight over the lava or in the lava was at the end of the movie. So at least I walked out seeing something that was really cool and said, okay, yeah, that works well. Number seven on my list. This is going to throw some people. Return of the Jedi, <laughs> which was the third movie in the first trilogy. And I know some people are going to think that movie should be ranked a lot higher. And, you know, it closed out the series pretty well. The beginning of that movie was great. You know, where you saw, um, you know, Luke is now basically a Jedi and he fights the Rancorn or whatever that thing was called. Because I've been calling it Rancorn. I don't know if that's exactly how it's pronounced. And I only called it that because I don't remember anyone in the movie actually ever giving it a name. But I think I saw the name somewhere else later on. Um... But that was cool, and some of the other stuff was cool. And, you know, the fight between Luke Skywalker and, and Darth Vader was cool. But I hated the little things. <laughs> I said, oh my God, why did they put that in there? It was just too kid cute. And I knew, I called this, I went to see this with my friend Scott, and I said, you know what, you're going to see those plush toys in stores pretty soon, and I bet there's going to be a cartoon. Lo and behold, you saw the plush things, and you saw a cartoon, Ewoks. <sighs> horrible. Just horrible. And I'm sorry, I, I didn't really like it all that much. It was okay, but it wasn't great. Here we go now. Number six on my list is The Last Jedi, which is the second movie of the third trilogy. And people beat up on this movie for no reason whatsoever. I thought it had a lot of great action. I liked all the characters in the movie. I thought that the only thing that it kind of lacked is at a certain point, there was no real direction. And, you know, they brought in this guy, Ryan Johnson, to direct it uh, after J.J. Abrams did a great job with the, you know, the Force Awakens, but you know, it was still a fun movie. had a, had enough action. I thought it was cool where you got Luke out there, and you don't know that he's a hologram, and you got everyone shooting all this stuff at him, and then when it goes away, he just like brushes his shoulder. I said, I said, yeah, that's a bad man, and that was done really well because even at that point, we didn't know that he wasn't really there. I just thought that visually, it was pretty cool. A lot of the other things were pretty cool. I had a good time with it. And once again, I'm going to say this. There's a lot of people who put uh, uh, Kelly Marie Tran through the ringer. whole lot of racists out there. Y'all know who you are. She was fine in that movie, you know, playing Rose. I thought she was fine. Um, the rest of y'all, I'm sorry, but she was fine. And the movie was fun. 
like I said, it had enough action in it. It was great. That's my take on it. It still didn't make top five, but it was a fun movie. Number five on my list is The Empire Strikes Back. And that might freak some people out. It's like, okay, how come he has Empire Strikes Back before Return of the Jedi? Because Empire Strikes Back didn't have anything stupid cute. It was a logical movie. Everything kind of fit. And it left us with a cliffhanger. I kind of like those cliffhanger movies. Nobody saw that coming. If anyone says they saw that coming, they're lying. Nobody saw the ending of that movie coming. And it was just, it was, it was a fun movie. That's where we heard, Luke, I'm your father. I mean, nobody saw that coming. I certainly didn't see that coming. Uh, it, it, was, it was a fun movie. It, I thought that it just had enough action. Everything was going good. Um, it threw in enough plot twist. Come on. When they're in the cave and they don't realize they're inside a monster. <laughs> I thought, ooh, that was a nice take. I didn't see that coming either. That was a fun movie. Thoroughly enjoyed that movie. And it really had me waiting to see the third movie uh, in the original trilogy. Eh, it kind of failed a little bit. But still, that was a great cliffhanger to that final movie in the first trilogy. Number four. Okay, this is where there's going to be beef from a lot of other people. The Rise of Skywalker. I love The Rise of Skywalker. I know there's a lot of people who said, wait, Palpatine wasn't dead. He came back. And they fretted over that, and they fretted over a whole lot of things. But let's own up to this. That movie had a lot of action. There were a whole lot of fights. You still had this thing between, um, okay, see, I can look down here, between Kylo Ren and Rey. It was just, it was really good. They wiped C-3PO, or, yeah, C-3PO, they wiped his, his mind once again, it's like this dude must have had his, his mind wiped a bunch of times. I know he's a robot. I'm still calling him a dude. But it was a fun movie. I just really enjoyed everything about it. Even the ending. I enjoyed the ending of the movie. You still had a lot of action. I don't know how come people hated on this movie so much. And I liked what they did with Carrie Walker's character, Princess Leia, because she had passed away already. I like how they, they did that movie, uh, you know, her, her position in that movie. I thought it was very well done. It was very tasteful. You know what? Number four on my list. I enjoyed it. Number three on my list is The Force Awakens. This is where we meet Ray. This is where we meet Finn. I thought that this was a great introduction to the final trilogy. We got to see Han Solo again. We got to see, uh, uh, oh my God, <laughs> the Wookiee. <laughs> Chewie. We got to see Chewbacca. We got to see Princess Leia. It was a wonderful movie. I mean, you got to see some nasty monsters. I, boy, I really like this. And I like the character of Rey. I think Daisy Ridley really played this part really well. And John Bodega played it really well also. And, you know, some of y'all out there, once again, beat up on John Boy Boyega, but he took it well. A whole lot of race problems with some of you folks. I just don't understand that. We didn't have that with the Star Trek stuff, but for some reason, y'all just didn't like minorities in any of these movies. Too bad. It was a wonderful movie. I thought it was just something that when I left, I felt pumped up that I saw something and I couldn't wait for the next movie. Number two is a wild card on my list. Rogue One. Rogue One is basically the prequel, 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 <laughs> however you say that, to um, New Hope. In the fact that these are the people, if you remember in New Hope, where um, at the beginning of the movie, you see Princess Leia putting something in uh, uh, R2-D2, and then it's found by Luke and Obi-Wan. Well, Rogue, uh, Rogue One is the prequel. That's where all that comes from. And I truthfully, I had no idea what the movie was going to be about. It just, I saw the previews and said, okay, I got to go see this. Because I didn't read all that stuff ahead of time. But I just liked everything about this movie. I thought it was fun. And like I said, it had a whole bunch of action in it. 
I didn't know so many people were going to get killed in it. <laughs> so I'll admit that. And you had Darth Vader being so cool. You had a whole bunch of folks shooting at him. And he's just like, you know, that was cool. It, the whole thing was cool. And I will admit that it was kind of freaky seeing the general uh, being de-aged and seeing Carrie Walker as Princess Leia being de-aged. Boy, that was a little creepy. That wasn't really realistic at all. But it didn't take away from the rest of the movie. So I thought that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that movie a lot. That's me. And number one on my list is A New Hope. The, the very first Star Wars movie. Um, locally for me, I saw it in week number 68 at one of the theaters. You know, that's basically kind of across from where I live now. When my friend Scott said, you got to go see this movie, I'll pay for it and I'll buy the popcorn. It's like, yeah, I'm there. And I enjoyed it. It was a great way to open up this series of movies. We didn't know anything about these characters. They played well together. Um, Darth Vader was a rotten blankety blank. <laughs> Obi-Wan. I thought, you know what? Okay. Yes, I'm a Star Trek guy, but this isn't bad. Because at the time, what was I? 18 years old, I think. And I thought it would be disloyal to Star Trek to go see this movie. And there were a lot of people who thought that. I mean, that's just how we were back then. But I was 18 years old, and I saw it, and I said, okay, yes, this is pretty good. This is very good. Had a lot of good action. Had a lot of good laughs. I liked it. This one counts. So that's my number one of all the Star Wars movies. So uh, I mangled some names. I forgot some names. But at least I got through my top ten. So I'm wondering what y'all think about my top 10. I know that if a lot of people see this, there's going to be a lot of hate on some of it. But I doubt most people are going to disagree with 8 through 10 and probably number 1. But it'd be interesting to find out. Anyway, we're done with this. My name is Mitch Mitchell. I hope y'all have a wonderful rest of the week.